On today's episode of The Lucid Lens, do you remember those supposed alien bodies, the Peruvian Nazca mummies that were presented to the Mexican Congress uh, last year? Well, three renowned American scientists have put their reputations on the line, gone to Peru, and begun preliminary studies of these mummies. I think they're real. There's footage and records of objects in the skies that we don't know exactly what they are. Intelligence representative at a high level from the US government is saying publicly, we are not alone. Greetings, beautiful people, you marvelous citizens of the planet Earth, and welcome to The Lucid Lens. I'm just a normal guy pondering existence and the meaning of the universe. If you enjoy what you're hearing, consider subscribing. Leave a like, dislike, but more importantly, leave a comment. I want to know what you think is really going on out there. Okay, enough of that because shit's getting real. So all I read online after the Nazca mummies were presented at the Mexican Congress last year was, we want to see credible scientists studying these things. Not those South American scientists. No, not the Japanese or the Russian ones. Or We want Americans. Well, your wish has been granted. Good morning. Buenos dias. My Spanish is no bueno. I apologize. Professor, doctor, you owe me no apology. Uh, all you have to do is look at the British House of Commons or many other congresses or organizations around the world, and you see that similar events occur. Uh, this is not a reflection on the people or the government of Peru. Uh, things like this happen, and I'm not disturbed by us. I've been president of many uh, international uh, organizations. I've also uh, chaired faculty council meetings and other types of meetings with faculty and when the stakes are high, people become very involved. And sometimes we, we including myself, sometimes we overreact. And so, uh, again, I, I am not offended. So uh, I do want to uh, thank uh, many people for allowing me the opportunity to be here today and to organize a, a small a team of people who I greatly respect and have had friendships and professional relationships with for many years. I know that their integrity is unquestioned, uh, their credibility is at the highest levels, and we would not be here if we expected anything to happen that would affect our credibility. The members of the team that I came here with, who are co-equals with me, they have merely asked me to speak on their behalf. But the uh, other members are uh, Dr. James Caruso, who you heard about, is a forensic pathologist, uh, chief medical examiner of the uh, city and county of Denver, Colorado. Uh, his uh, long-standing uh, curriculum vitae his resume is among the best you could ever find. Now, the same is true of uh, our other colleague, uh, Dr. William Rodriguez. Uh, he's a forensic anthropologist and has been associated with a number of different organizations, including the Armed Forces Institute of Pathology in the United States, and also the State Department has done missions for the Department of Defense and the State Department, as has Dr. Caruso. So you have uh, the highest quality individuals who have been invited to come here. And I want to thank uh, Jaime Musan for uh, helping us to get here. But let me assure you that none of us, Dr. Caruso, Dr. Rodriguez, myself, have received any kind of financial remuneration for being here. We are volunteering our time because we believe that this is a very important investigation. It should not be minimized or trivialized. The, the people involved here uh, are doing their best in a scientific inquiry to find out if we can identify what's going on. 
Uh, I am not calling in to uh, question the, the motives of the government of Peru or anyone associated with the government or universities. But remember that universities, the purpose of a university is to do scientific inquiry. And if that is taken away from us or diminished in any way, then we all lose. But um, that said, and I'm, I'm sorry if I rambled just a little bit, but I do want you to know that uh, I, I often speak from my heart and sometimes I'm not totally clear in what I mean. I do have a small short script here today that I will uh, refer to and it will be very short. Uh, I think that's appropriate uh, to the time uh, that we are in this investigation, the point that we are. So if I may, and I'm old, so I need glasses. I do want to thank the gracious hosts, especially uh, the University of Ica. Uh, they could not have been more cordial and professional with us. Everything was made available to us that we requested. Nothing was hidden or kept occult. Uh, everything was available to us. Uh, at no point did anyone say, no, you cannot look at this. Uh, anything we asked to see, it was provided to us. Let me assure you that Mr. Masson has not interfered in any way or injected any of his own personal opinions or positions into what the doctors on our team uh, are developing. In fact, he said at the outset, at the initiation of this, that he would not uh, influence us in any way and did not expect a specific outcome. And if um, we just report what we find. Let me clarify too, any opinions that are expressed today, any comments that I make are strictly my own. The same is true of Dr. Rodriguez and Dr. Caruso. They do not represent the opinions or position of our employers or of our uh, organizations. So it's, it's us. Peru is um, a wonderful country. Uh, this is my first time here. My experiences have been very positive, and I can speak for my colleagues when they have spoken to me exactly the same way. Uh, the people, loving, open, uh, very welcoming, and I appreciate that. And the same is true of the people we've associated with the universities or the, uh, the personal uh, people that we worked, at, uh, worth, uh, worked with, including uh, Dr. Jose Salsa, who without his help, uh, the progress of our investigation would not have proceeded as efficiently as it has. Now that said, I want you to know that this is very initial uh, examination that we have performed. We have no final opinions at this time, and that's one of the things that we're going to recommend. We respectfully request that the government and the Ministry of Culture uh, allow further investigation unimpeded. And that, again, is the purpose of scientific inquiry, is to look at it, develop hypotheses. If the hypotheses do not work, we reject them. We move on to other hypotheses or explanations. Um, I firmly believe, as do my colleagues and everyone that I've interacted with, that at every step of the examination process, we should, and I hope we have, paid appropriate respect to the cultural heritage of the Peruvian people and to the bodies themselves. Uh, we have done our best uh, to respect uh, the culture that uh, we are uh, perhaps not as familiar with as we would like to be. Further, we don't believe that scientists in the United States 
are any better than anybody else. Perhaps we have uh, better facilities, and it might be a might be a recommendation that if uh, the bodies could be released to other facilities that have uh, better equipment, uh, have experts uh, that would look at any evidence in an unbiased uh, way. Also, we are willing to consult uh, with the government or the uh, Ministry of Culture to make recommendations of how to move forward with any identification procedures and to perform a proper forensic examination. Now, I, I have a phrase I use often. I say there are no emergencies in forensic science. We take time, we collect data, we analyze that data, we develop preliminary uh, conclusions. I don't want to say conclusions, excuse me. Uh, preliminary opinions that will lead us perhaps to a conclusion. Part of the forensic examination might be to determine whether any of the anomalies that have been identified are of ancient modifications or modern modifications. And with a proper forensic investigation, we would hope that we would be able to uh, evaluate the, that. Presently, it is our opinion that what we have examined is worthy of additional scrutiny and study. We respectfully encourage the Peruvian Ministry of Culture to facilitate transfer of specimens to research facilities with the resources, equipment, and personnel to perform further examinations consistent with the highest forensic standards. And that said, if the opportunity arises to work appropriately with the Ministry of Culture or any other uh, Peruvian organization, I would welcome the opportunity to work with them. I also have another phrase, none of us are as smart as all of us. If we work together, enjoy each other's opinions, I think we move forward much more effectively. Also, at this point, I want to make sure that we have no definitive conclusions, and it would pre be premature for me to say so. As a matter of transparency and clarity, I want to be sure that everyone knows no restrictions were placed on our examination procedures, and we believe that everyone involved was open and forthright with us. The statements made by our scientific me, uh, team are our own, and any statements made by others must not be construed to be our opinions. Uh, when everything we do in science hopefully uh, becomes peer reviewed, but many of the other people here have published articles and presented papers in the public health. They have peer reviewed them, and you say that we are all here that we have people who have the same level of knowledge or more than we do and look at what we've done. They question our hypothesis, our uh, material and methods, our data collection and data analysis, and then uh, uh, evaluate the conclusions that we've reached. And uh, in order for something like this to be peer reviewed, if I understand your question correctly, is for us to collect uh, more data and put it out there in the scientific community for evaluation. Be critically uh, reviewed. Okay. And timeline, whatever time it takes. Uh, I'll defer to uh, Dr. Rodriguez and only to uh, Dr. Caruso to uh, give their opinions or position on this. Bill, do you want to You know, Jim? I think Dr. McDowell summed it up and you asked about other studies. Well, certainly we would want to, there's been some preliminary DNA studies. We would want 
actual very definitive DNA studies done uh, at high complexity laboratories. Uh, the carbon dating uh, needs to be repeated with more sophisticated uh, methods. Uh, those are the things that we're looking for. You know, our preliminary investigation really just led to the fact that more investigation is needed. More questions need to be answered, and, and I want to emphasize that we would love to participate in that uh, for a Siguiente pregunta. Uh, let me, ah, let me no do this me. question for him. Uh, would you agree to continue this investigation? Is this worth it, Dr. McDowell? Yes. Okay, and you are willing to, to, do, to coordinate this investigation if, if we have the agreement of the government of Peru? <laughs> If asked, uh, I, I and my colleagues or other individuals could help coordinate this and help it move forward. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm not impugning the motives of the government of Peru or the, uh, the ministry culture. Uh, that's not my objective. I don't want to create an environment that's divisive. We want to collaborate. And so uh, I will be glad to work with any uh, reputable organization. Jim? I, I agree. Um, more research is needed. Um, it should be done in a open and free environment with exchange of ideas. That's what science is. Bill? Just to reiterate, yes, uh, uh, it indeed requires more in-depth scientific studies in order to come to a conclusion. And it needs to be looked at by other scientists, too, to review whatever work. But we would certainly be willing to take the task on to continue this work at a very high level and in much more detail to make a determination as to what exactly uh, we are looking at. Dr. John McDowell. Dr. James Caruso. Dr. William Rodriguez. These guys are the real deal. Um, is this enough for people to stop making cake jokes? Probably not. Humor is part of our culture. It's how, you know, we cope with things that might scare us a little bit. It makes, you know, information easier to digest and talk about. I mean, even Dr. McDowell even opened up his speech with a <laughs> saying his Spanish is no bueno. I thought that was kind of funny. But I think it's time we all start taking this seriously. I mean, apparently the Ministry of Culture in Peru is taking this seriously. They busted in and tried to take control of the presentation and try to confiscate the bodies, which weren't there. But well, I'll give you my thoughts on that in a bit. I think my favorite thing that Dr. McDowell said was, we don't believe scientists in the United States are any better than anybody else. He, he really showed a lot of respect to the, the scientists that have been studying these things for seven years now. You don't spend seven years of your career studying something that you think is a hoax. I like how he set the stage. He said he's not disturbed by the wide range of reactions people have had to the discovery. He said when the stakes are high, people become very involved and sometimes we overreact. We're all guilty of this. He chose this specific team to bring with him because of the respect he has for them. Their integrity is unquestioned and credibility is the highest levels. And they would not be there if they expected anything to happen that would affect that credibility. He's saying this after they already examined the bodies. This is huge. Him and his team had already looked at the bodies. He felt he you know, had seen enough to convince him that this is worth studying. If it was an obvious hoax, he wouldn't have said that. He wouldn't have put his name out there. Uh, I mean, that's huge. If they had any concerns at all, they would not have proceeded with the press conference. 
He stressed that they have not received any monetary compensation for coming. They're strictly there as volunteers, and he highlighted the importance of the discovery. I love that he said that the people involved here are doing their best with the scientific inquiry to see if we can figure out what's going on. Everything was made available to them. Nothing was hidden. He reassured that Jaime Musan did not interfere or influence them. Again, he had just beautiful things to say about the country of Peru, everyone they worked with, especially the University of Ica. He was very respectful with regards to the cultural heritage of Peru, and he just seemed like a very genuine person. You know, he's willing to consult with the government of Peru and the Ministry of Culture if they're willing to cooperate. He stressed this is a very initial investigation on their part, and they have no final opinions. But at this current stage of their investigation, what they examined is worthy of additional scrutiny and study. Again, they, they're experts. They looked at everything. They were allowed to look at whatever they wanted to. It was real enough to them to continue to keep going. Uh, he said he wants the Ministry of Culture to arrange transfer of specimen to the best research uh, facilities possible. Something else he said that was I, I loved was, none of us are as smart as all of us. Uh, that I mean, that's beautiful. Um, we need to work together on this. No one nation should be, you know taking the charge or, 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 you know, excluding anyone else, I think. And they've been asking people to come study this for years. They said, we're open, come, you know, come. I'm, it's an issue with Peru. They mentioned that they won't let them leave the country because they, they think this is some cultural artifact. I mean, there, there's a lot of misinformation about this. I'll link, you know, there's a couple of, of good resources to get like the full picture of what's really going on. You know, I think a lot of people dismiss this because of Jaime Musan's, you know, involvement. He didn't make this discovery. He attached himself to it. And, you know, people claim he's a known hoaxer. He himself has never hoaxed anything. He's been fooled by hoaxes because he's a very, um, let's see, excitable person. He, he's a believer he wants to bring, you know, the truth out there. So he might get a little excited and um, careless, perhaps. But with this, I think he's really done his due diligence and had as many experts that are willing to come forward and examine these bodies. I mean, we've already had, we had, I believe we had a doctor from, uh, from Colorado. We, I think we had somebody from Canada. We had Russian, Japanese, I believe in one or two other countries, Mexican, Peruvians, but a lot of people studying these and no one that's actually laid hands on them and studied the material has said they were hoaxes. The people that I think have, uh, there's a couple of armchair, armchair warriors on the internet who looked at some, you know, x-rays of different specimens. Remember there's a hundred bodies, at least I'm sure in this site, there's potentially thousands. I, I swear I read that somewhere that there's upwards of hundreds or if not thousands of these things there. And they've only examined, you know, a certain number of them because, I mean, I'm sure if, even if you just had one of these things, there's so much you could learn from it because who, when you're discovering a new species like this bizarre a humanoid form with these implants and eggs and I mean, I mean, it's wild, right? So it's no wonder people are having mixed emotions and reactions to this. I, I think this is extra, uh, an extraordinary step forward. We have highly credentialed and respected Americans now putting their names out there saying, yes, we've, we've gone, we've looked at them, and we do believe this is worth looking at. So the question is, who's going to come out next? Will there be further study? Will there be additional, you know, examinations from, from Europeans, more, more Americans, more, I mean, you know, the one thing he pointed out was, you know, we don't think we're better than you, but perhaps we do have better facilities and equipment. So I think that's the next step is to, you know, get higher caliber equipment, but it's going to be an issue, I think, of 
whether the Ministry of Culture lets these bodies leave the country. I mean, I don't know how they got the two over to Mexico for the hearing last year. But, um, yeah, it's... In the Ministry of Culture, it's like... If they're trying to suppress this, doing a very bad job of it. I mean, I've seen people liken them to you know, the military industrial complex, you know, hiding the secrets in the U S or whatever, you know, global cabal or or whatever, but they're doing a terrible job of hiding the story. If that's what they're intending to do. I feel like these guys are kind of lone actors, the, the ministry of culture. Maybe they had someone tell them to, you know, cover this up or do your best. But if this was really trying to get covered up, Maybe they thought the the story itself was so fantastical and out there. They thought that would be enough and the stigma was still strong enough that... I mean, the stigma is not strong in South America. That's the thing. It's really only strong in America. The rest of the world has been more or less open to this for a long time. Um, I mean, look at the Nazca lines and, and there's similarities to these beings all over the world. Even, even in America. So, yeah, I, I don't think... There is anyone pulling the strings necessarily behind the Ministry of Culture because they could have disappeared these a long time ago if they really wanted to. I mean, they know where a lot of them are in the university. I mean, they could have made, staged it to make it look like whatever, right? They could have disappeared this stuff, but they haven't. They're allowing this to continue. People say that's because it's fake. Well, it doesn't look like it's fake. <laughs> it looks like it's real and... I've learned after, you know, only researching this subject for, you know, not even a year at this point that a lot of things I thought were kind of ridiculous and fake, you know, just over a year ago are turning out to have been real. So, uh, yeah, um, I'm curious to know what you guys think. Um, I mean, I think this is incredible that that we're at this point right now. Um, There's some other other stories that that. Nothing really major I wanted to talk about. I, I kind of wanted to keep this a self-contained episode, um, just kind of focusing on this. Um, but yeah, I want to know what you guys think is really going on down there. Uh, what do you think that is going to happen next? Um, and I know uh, you know a lot of people are saying, "Oh, why was why won't Gary Nolan go?" And I'm pretty sure he got burned on one of these before, and he just kind of doesn't want his name on it. He doesn't have time. I mean, these folks have been studying these things for seven years, and they still don't know the origin or what. I mean, how can you determine the origin of something that's dead and if it didn't originate from here or if it did if it evolved alongside us and i mean there's so many questions i'm not a scientist i have no idea i wouldn't even know where to start but um you know people are like oh they don't have an opinion on it well how could they have an opinion on it i mean (laughs) you're looking at an unknown unknown like i mean it's like what what do you even start with i mean I remember Grush even said you know when we were looking there something about the biologics uh, i think it might have been on rogan his interview there where they said, sometimes we're looking at these things. We're like, well, what, what even is this? We don't even know what this is like, you know, the biology is so different from ours, but these are fairly similar. I mean, the reptilian with the eggs and they found even a fetus inside, um, further up in one of them that had three eggs. I mean, there's, there's no way these things are fake. The question is, what are they though? Are they related to us in any way? Are they visitors? Are they something else? I don't know. I wanna know what you guys think. See you on the flip side.